Today is Saturday, May 9th, and this is News from the Frunk. Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of News from the Frunk. Today we're going to talk about Tesla Energy. Now, as many of us, I think, suspected or knew, um, Tesla is not a car company. Uh, Tesla's mission, as stated by Elon, has been to drive the or to accelerate the change to a renewable transportation system uh, and generally to accelerate the transition to a, a renewable energy system overall. So a week last Thursday, Tesla had the announcement of Tesla Energy. Um, there are uh, new products coming out from Tesla available on the Tesla Motors website, but also on a separate teslaenergy.com website. They announced two products, the Power Pack and the Power Wall. Previously, they'd given us a lot of details about the Gigafactory. And we knew that the Gigafactory was a 50 gigawatt hour production capacity uh, factory, but 35 gigawatts were, 35 gigawatt hours were allocated for cell production for the cars. So where was this other 15 gigawatt hours a year? Well, that was going into this new energy company. So Tesla announced these two products, and essentially they are a residential uh, battery solution and a commercial or utility battery solution. So let's talk about what they announced. The first one was Powerwall. Two variants, a 10 kilowatt hour variant and a seven kilowatt hour variant, um, designed to mount on the wall of a house and to be installed either as a single setup or up to ten, uh, nine units, so pot potentially up to 90 kilowatt hours, um, really for a couple of different uh, so, uh, uses. One is if you want to go completely grid-free. So if you've got solar panels on the house, uh, obviously solar is useless during the night, so you can connect the new power wall to your solar environment during the day, uh, assuming you're not using all the power that is generated from the solar, you can charge the batteries and then it's available for you to use, use whenever. Uh, so that's a daily use uh, kind of model. Um, there is also this idea of um, price smoothing in locations like California where we have uh, it roughly, I think, potentially as low as at six or eight cents a kilowatt hour uh, on a night, but during the day can be as high as 35 or 40 cents per kilowatt hour. The ability to charge batteries overnight and then discharge during the day can potentially reduce your power bill by a factor of four. So a couple of very different scenarios there, um, but both uh, very suitable for that power wall environment. Now there's been a lot of discussion about the economics of that and whether it's feasible and you know, uh, the fact that the power wall comes with a DC to DC connector but doesn't come with an AC to DC inverter. Uh, the, um, there are additional installation costs, so it, it's quite a complex determination about whether it makes sense to do that or not. One of the fascinating things was that they set the price point for that 10 kilowatt hour unit at $3,500. I think there was an expectation that was going to be much higher. Now the other thing they announced was this power pack. Now this is aimed at commercial, uh, so uh, large retail stores or, or large factories, uh, and also uh, utility. The idea with power pack, whereas the power wall can scale from one to ten, or one to nine units, the power pack can scale uh, allegedly almost infinitely. They come in 100 kilowatt hour configurations, and you can essentially bolt as many of those together as you want to get multi-gigawatt hour storage. Uh, and there are some, quite a few examples on the Tesla Energy website of uh, either store, retail stores that are using them in relatively small configurations, all the way up to utilities that are using them in very large configurations. And part of that is about um, demand smoothing. Uh, power usage in uh, you, um, companies can be quite peaky. The most extreme example of that is at the uh, supercharging stations themselves, where if you get eight cars coming in and they're all drawing 100 kilowatt hours, uh, 100 kilowatts, then you know, you're hitting nearly a megawatt of power consumption. When there are no cars there, it's not using anything. So 
uh, the way that pricing works from some of the utilities is you get massively penalized if you have these huge power, spe uh, power spikes. So the ability to charge up those batteries over a period of time uh, and then use the batteries to hit those peak demands can massively reduce your power consumption. Now that would also be true in, in companies that are using um, refrigeration uh, for, and drawing on lots of power in kind of quite bursty uh, ways or, or running motors that have high power demands but maybe don't run all the time. So lots of options to help uh, companies smooth out the cost of power. On the supply side, um, there's this idea of peak shaving where um, uh, residential customers can create very peaky demand or during the day can uh, have high demand and then on a night have much lower demand for power from the utility. So rather than spinning up a complete new power plant to supply that peak load, the idea is that on a night when there's maybe not so much demand, you can uh, feed power into the batteries or the utility can feed power into the batteries and then during the day when there's that peak spike, they can just turn that those batteries on in milliseconds uh, and supply back to the uh, grid. So a lot of research on this, a lot of discussion about it. There are uh, plenty of presentations from J.B. Straubel talking about the idea of peak shaving and what that could do for, for states like California. Um, so what was the, out, uh, the impact of this? So the announcement was made a week last Thursday um, at the uh, call for the Q1 earnings the other night, Elon said that they'd essentially sold out the entire supply through the middle of next year within a week. Uh, they didn't expect the demand to be anything like what it was. I think they'd had 38,000 reservations of the power wall, uh, but the bigger demand was for the power pack. Um, they'd had, I think, over 200 companies uh, apply to be uh, resellers of those energy solutions. Um, but the utility demand has been absolutely huge for the, the power pack. So basically they can't make them fast enough. Now, one of the other things that came to light was, uh, and Elon has spoken about this before, is the idea of the Gigafactory. Uh, and he has described both the Gigafactory and the Fremont factory in quite an interesting way, that they are really machines to make machines. And Tesla has put as much emphasis on, build, on the operation and design of the factories as they have on the products that they're producing. And the reason for that is they want to replicate that model. So... Uh, assuming that Model 3 takes off the way that Elon hopes it will, then they will need more factories. So they're using the Fremont factory as a model for the other factories that they're going to build. Likewise for Gigafactory. So the Gigafactory in Nevada is now Gigafactory 1. And the idea is that is a modular solution that they will make, uh, and it's unspecified how many, but potentially lots more Gigafactories to supply the batteries that are going to be needed, not only for the cars as they begin to ramp up into Model 3, where there are hundreds of thousands being produced every year, but more importantly, into this energy solution. And on the earnings call, Elon suggested that the demand for batteries for the energy business could well be at least twice as big as it is for the car business. So, fascinating times. Tesla Motors is still Tesla Motors, but now, as well as the mobile battery that sits in here, it now has two different versions of the stationary battery. Um, the company is evolving very quickly. There's been a slew of um, new uh, updates from the analysts. Uh, Tesla uh, today, uh, when it closed on Friday, the stock was trading around about 2.30. It's been all over the place a lot of people asking a lot of questions about uh, where Tesla was going to go from here. But with these new announcements, a number of analysts have come out and set target prices of around 350 or more. Um, so I think there's a lot more people, a lot more comfortable that Tesla uh, has a long-term, very good uh, future and lots and lots of opportunities out there. Alrighty, so that's it for Tesla Energy. Lots more information on the Tesla Energy website. 
Um, although there has been a, a few comments that it's still lacking some information about the specifications and some other things, Elon has acknowledged that. So keep an eye out on teslaenergy.com for more information. Uh, it be interesting to see how that evolves over time. Okay, that's the wrap for today. I'll be back again pretty soon with a quick summary of the Q1 earnings call that happened last Thursday.